I know what it is like to lose. To feel so desperate that you are right about your spec. Yet to fail all the same. Dread it. Run from it. The correction still arrives. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehaus. And in this video, we need to talk about how the correction comes for every book. That is right. No matter what you do, no matter what you think, no matter what grade you are, eventually, that correction is going to make its way to you. So in this video, we need to talk about how here in 2023, buyers and dealers are going to need to adjust their strategy. You know, it is a game of chicken. Two cars going at each other, head to head, lights on, and who is going to be the one that turns first? Well, in this video, we're going to go over some books. I'm going to talk about what I mean when the correction eventually makes its way to you, and then kind of do some market ramblings about, generally speaking, what these two entities that are going head to head are going to have to do in this coming year. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe or join the content, help support the channel, do one of those things I'd appreciate. But let's get into this video here today. X-Men number four. Did you guys know that this ranks a 17 or 16, or if you're really bullish, 18 on the swag scale? In the low risk to some risk category. Now, unfortunately for me, I did not have the swag scale earlier in 2022 because I would have known that some risk doesn't mean no risk. In fact, this is a book that has corrected, that has felt the correction a lot sooner than a lot of the other books that I'm about to show you in this video here today. But before I do, I did want to talk a little bit about this idea of the correction coming for all books. Now, I want to apologize in advance to all my comic book dealer friends out there who watch the channel, but I did want to talk a little bit about this idea. And, you know, as much as the market is doing still pretty good overall, as much as there is always going to be a demand for comic books, especially the, you know, blue chip keys and things like that, there is going to be a point where a lot of books just don't have the demand out there in the market. And a lot of these prices that we felt in the 2021 and 2022 times are just not going to be able to yield the same returns that they did, you know, in those times. I mean, we're going to we're going to have to accept that you're not going to be able to get that price that potentially you might have bought into it for in those two years. So adjustments here in the market are going to need to be met. Now, that's not to say that there aren't going to be uneducated buyers out there who might just see a book, kind of know, generally speaking, what the price maybe should be, and will bite the bullet and just pay whatever it is to have it then, there, and now. I mean, that is totally acceptable. You can definitely have that. And that effectively is what a lot of LCSs or dealers are going to do. They're going to have their price, which is totally fine, by the way. They're going to have their price. They're going to have it on the wall. And when the right buyer comes along who's just willing to pay that price, they'll be able to make that sale. Now, I, we hear a lot from comic book buyers out there in the market, you know, always kind of joking and complaining about, you know, my LCS still thinks that it is 2021 based on all their prices. Well, that's going to be the thing. I mean, a lot of stores out there are kind of bought into certain prices that they got collections in or they got, you know, a bunch of books. Maybe they, you know, buy books off of things like Heritage and they bought it in that year and now they're sitting with inventory and they want to not take a loss on any of those books. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. I do think that it is possible that they can sort of weather those storms. I think that as long as, you know, LCSs or dealers can make their money in other places, they can hold stickers on books for as long as they want them to, especially the major key. So they don't have to capitulate in the same way that, you know, a lot of other books have been doing so if they are somebody who, you know, has the ability to hold. And I think a lot of dealers do have the ability to hold. The ones that have been doing it for a long time, the ones that run their, you know, uh, business really well. And I think a lot of times, you know, we're going to see a lot of those dealers actually just take that stuff and put it in their back stock. You know, I mean, if you ha if you are somebody who bought a book like X-Men number four and, you know, you overpaid for it like I did, 
you know, it, it's just not for sale. Like that's ultimately what you have to do. You're just gonna have to say, okay, great. Like this one went on heritage for X dollars good for that buyer, you know, but like that doesn't mean that my copy is going to go for the same price. They just have the ability to hold. And that is what, you know, a lot of what dealers and LCSs are going to have to do in this coming year. I mean, shout out to Drew from Como Comic Books. You know, he always talks about how this is probably going to be a bin book year versus a wall book year, right? Where, you know, some years it's all about the wall books, buyers are buying them up. Some year it's all about the bin books and buyers are buying those up. And funny enough, I think that that is very true and it's gonna play out that way, not only due to the fact that those buyers can only now afford some of those bins because you know everyone's looking to kind of cut back on some of their expenses, but also due to the fact that I think a lot of those dealers are just going to weather the storm and hold on to those wall book prices, keep those stickers up, and just nobody is going to entertain any of them on the wall, or they're going to take off you know a lot of their inventory from the wall only put up the books that maybe aren't as much in demand and, you know, put those books on ice, uh, you know, the major keys that they have lost out that kind of equitable position on. So I think that that's going to be a really interesting thing. And, you know, ultimately where I'm going with this is this idea of that the correction is going to happen for every single book out there in the market. I know that that is a pretty blanket statement. And again, I'm sure that there's going to be tons of examples that that doesn't always apply to. But generally speaking, there is going to be a point when all of the froth comes off of all these prices. And I think we're actually starting to see that manifest, you know, in these last couple of months. I think a lot of people were feeling like, oh my God, the, the, the market has been crashing. You know, we've been doing our index videos here together and we've been seeing that market have that pullback and that correction. But, you know, there's another way to think about it. I mean, again, most of the prices, all of the indexes are, you know, more valuable today than they were back in 2020. It's just that they shot up way too fast, way too much. And now that with things correcting, you know, we kind of are in this position where, you know, it feels like all the books are crashing, but actually this is probably where they all should have been at all points always. So, you know, let's kind of take dig into it and I'll kind of show you guys a couple examples of books that, you know, they've been putting up the good fight. They've been holding pretty strong overall. But, you know, it just finally caught up with them that they finally had their correction. Now, I made a mention that I was looking at some of the Fantastic 449s in a previous video, and I thought it was really interesting. We had two big ones sell at this past week's Heritage uh, Weekly Auction here in January 2022. And you can see that this 8.5 grade went for 38.40. And then this 70 went for 1680. Now I know what you guys are thinking. I was looking at the 70, but uh, sadly I was on a live stream at the time and I totally forgot and I wasn't paying attention. Otherwise, I probably would have bid on this book. But let us talk about you know some of these prices and put it into perspective for you guys to show you how the correction has been coming. So if we go down here to the 8.5 grade, uh, you know obviously a book that is you know 5500 on the census. Uh, just so you guys know, this book ranks a 18 on the swag scale for me. Eight fives have 181 here. Fair market value for these ones, generally speaking, uh, for a while had been at that kind of $6,000 range. And you can see the last few sales for this were 5,100, 7,066, 66, slash price of eight, 6,077. And finally, this last sale that we got here in this auction was finally down to that 3840. Now remember, this is a book that in 2020 was selling around that, you know, highs of 2,700, maybe 2,800 around here and this is after taking a huge you know spike uh, coming off of 2017 so you know around this time this is where the book was and then we see it shoot all the way up to you know peak prices of like eight thousand dollars this is just too much right like maybe this book should be in that four thousand you know, $4,500 range, it needed to have that pullback because, you know, again, in October of 2020, this was a $2,600 book. So finally, we saw that capitulation. Finally, we see that the market is just saying, hey, whatever these prices are, are just too much. 3,800 is gonna be my max bid because that's where it should have been based on organic comic book growth. Now, let's talk a little bit about the 7.0 at 1680 here. If we go down here to the 7.0, you can see that 1680 was kind of in that price window that I have been kind of projecting for this book, talking about how this thing needed to correct back down to a level that felt more in proportion to what the 2020 price was, like about a you know 15% higher as I've kind of talked about on the indexes where you know you can see See, this is a book in 2020 that you know sold roughly around the $1,200 price point and was shooting all the way up to the you know $2,400 range, 2,000, 2,150, 22, 21, 
3,800 here. I don't know what happened with this price, uh, 2,400, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, it capitulated back down to this 1680 price. And that 1680 price is generally speaking where this book probably should be. I mean, I would almost make the argument that coming off of, you know, $1,200, it could actually be even a little bit lower than that. But, you know, if there's somebody like me who wanted this book, that probably is a good price to pay. I probably, you know, should have pulled the trigger on that one. But I'm not so unconvinced that I'm not going to have more opportunities for that book here in the future. Like I've been saying kind of in the index videos, I think 2023 is going to be a trading sideways year. I mean, we might see at some a certain point, you know, uh, books start to turn the corner, so to speak. I mean, maybe if books have have, you know, kind of a correlation with what the Fed does with money printing, you know, if the Fed actually pivots in quarter four, which again, I know some of you guys, uh, you know, t talk to me in the comments and you say like, there's no way that they're pivoting in, you know, quarter four. I mean, I don't actually know. I mean, it's possible. Who knows? Nobody knows. But at some point when they do pivot, you know, that might have the correlation with comic book prices and we might see them start to trend upwards. But generally speaking, I feel like a lot of these books are going to just trade sideways for the most part. But what we're finally seeing is the Band-Aid kind of being ripped off you know, finally with a lot of these books, I, I, like every single book is going to get to that, you know, trend line that we've been kind of seeing in our indexes. And this is also true of a lot of the, you know, major grail books as well. This one I thought was really interesting, The Journey into Mystery 83, a book that I feel like there's been a lot of sellers for this thing. If you're somebody who is a fan of Thor and this is your grail book, now feels like a great time as any to buy this one. But here at 1.8 went for $4,400. And just to put this one in perspective, I mean, that is basically probably the price that, you know, it should have been based on the trend line. You can see all the way back here in 2018, it's a $2,000 book. 2019, it's a $2,850. You know, 2020, it's a $3,000 book. Shot all the way up to 8,400 in 2022. And then this last sale here at 4,400 feels a lot more in line to probably where this book should have been selling, uh, you know, based on these last couple of years and the basic trajectory of this book. So, you know, the correction has sort of finally come for even this kind of major grail, you know, these, these major keys as well. And, you know, if we're looking at them, even though they don't have that many on the census, which by the way, I believe that book rates a 21 on the swag scale. So, you know, definitely in that blue chip category, even for these, you know, major grails, there's still going to be that pullback. There's still going to be that correction because I think we have to think about the back issue market as one collective like pool of liquidity, right? Where it's like in 2021, 2022, you had a, a bunch of speculation coming in, right? You had a bunch of money, you had money printing, you had a bunch of speculation, you know, all these people thinking that they can flip and do the whole thing. And then you also had a lot of people coming into the hobby from nostalgia purposes. So I think the speculators, the money, all that stuff, that is now gone, but we still have people who came over for nostalgia reasons in 2020. And those people are still collecting today. So the pool of money has grown grown a little bit. And that's sort of why we're seeing, you know, a lot of the froth come off the top, but these prices are still holding over that of, you know, the 2020 floor, basically. So I think it's really interesting. I think, you know, dealers and buyers in this coming year are still playing chicken a little bit. I think that, you know, the cars are, are closing in. And, you know, sometimes I think, you know, dealers will get their price. Sometimes I think buyers are going to be able to, you know, uh, find prices that are based off of the correction. Again, my uh, recommendation to you guys is, you know, generally speaking, I think that if the book is selling around that 2020 level or slightly above, I think that that's probably an okay purchase. If you're still seeing books being sold off of the like 180 day, you know, GPA average or even the 90 day GPA average, and those prices are still pretty inflated, they're like 2022 levels. I would definitely still wait on those. I mean, I think that those ones are still due to correct. Of course, we're talking about, generally speaking, bronze and silver age books. I mean, if there's a golden age book that only has, you know, two on the census, I mean, you're at the whim of whatever the seller wants on, in that particular situation. But that is my message to you guys. What do you guys think about the current correction? Again, I'm not trying to be a doomsayer over here. You know, who knows where we go from here? We could get lower if there's some macro cataclysmic economic, you know, event. I mean, certainly prices could, you know, continue to correct after that. But generally speaking, I think that we're sort of finding that floor. I think now's probably a good time to buy if you can find that right deal. And again, I'm not trying to say that, you know, uh, the comic book market is dead. I'm just trying to throw out to you guys that I think that if you're somebody out there who's looking to make that purchase, these are sort of the windows you should be shopping in. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content. I'll see you in the next one.